Well, good afternoon, everyone. Can y'all hear me good? Yes, we can. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Feedback is awesome, awesome. I know you're eating, and I know that when we eat that, the, you know, the oxygen tends to go from up here to down here, but I am going to ask you to still stay completely engaged because I'm really excited about what I have to share with you today. As a matter of fact, as I was preparing and preparing and preparing, it was just like, I'm excited for the change that is going to make in my life, just reminding myself sometimes of the things that I know. So just a little bit of an introduction. My name is Aya Pavaranelli. I am an attorney, newly licensed in Texas as of last month. Thank you very much. But um, prior to that, um, I went to Ohio State University Law School. I graduated from Ohio State University with four degrees in English, political science, um, a master's in African American studies, and my law degree. And I got these four degrees in seven years. And I will tell you how I did it as I talk to you about the psychology of success. Because sometimes people take seven years to get one degree, right? And I did it while working and being actively involved and so on and so forth. Um, after law school, I decided that I did not want to practice law. So I followed my passion. And that's something that I've done my entire life. Much to my parents, the great dismay. Any of you have children in here? You know, we all have dreams for our children. And how many of you have a child who has done 100% of what you wanted them to do? Because if you, can you come up and teach us, please? <laughs> the rest of us want to know how you make that happen, right? Well, I was not one of those children who did 100% of what my parents wanted me to do. I kind of went with my own passions. And I truly believe that God has created in each and every one of us a particular purpose. Amen. Right? We are unique for a reason. And what happens in the world that we live in is that so many times we are told to become just like everybody else. Yeah. How many of you got into professions because people who loved you told you this is the way to make money? Mm -hmm. And it didn't really matter if that was your passion, if that's what you woke up dreaming about. It was like, listen, now bills got to get paid, mm -hmm. right? So-and-so is in this profession and is doing well. I think you should go into nursing. How many of us are giving our children that advice right now? And how many of you know people who are in jobs that they absolutely hate? Yeah. Yeah. Every morning they wake up and it's like a death sentence. <laughs> what? It's morning again. I mean, like people, if you do that seriously, you need to ask yourself, would you rather not wake up? And I do understand that there's times when we go through up and down the ocean. But truly, would you rather not wake up? So every morning that I wake my, uh, I wake up, that I open my eyes, I'm like, it's a great day. Even when I worked jobs I wasn't too crazy about, like flipping burgers at um, at Wendy's. I got so good at making that chili, y'all don't want to know how the chili is made. But anyway, <laughs> that was many moons ago. Even when I had to go to UPS and on load trucks, you know when you get upset that your package didn't come just on time, you need to really be thanking those who make those packages come on time the way they do. Because it was truly like working on a plantation. I'm not kidding you. We will clock in, the bell will ring, literally. And these trucks will back up. And they timed how long you had to offload a whole truck. And when they hired us, they said you never had to pick up more than 50 times by yourself, right? Okay? But I worked out, so I'm like, I'm good. But then you have these boxes that are yay big. They don't look big. But they have automotive parts in them. Anybody? See, I'm like, you bring it back up. Okay? And then you go to pick it up with your back will like you turn, right? And you couldn't call anybody else to come and help you with this. Because their time's on their trucks too, and they don't want to take the time off from their trucks to help you. So guess what, you figure out how to put your back in. And I would work five hours. I, was, I thought they were crazy to only give us five hour shifts. But at five, at, by the end of five hours, it was all I could do to get into my car and get back home. Wow. 
and fall asleep exhausted at 2 a.m. only to be up at 5.30 a.m. because I had my next job and after my next job I had school. I say all of this to say that many of us have been living lives of what Thoreau calls quiet desperation. Where you're just kind of making it. You're, I mean, on the, you know, how many of you have heard that saying, I don't look like what I've been through? Some of y'all do. Okay, no, that's not true. Okay. <laughs> You know, I don't look what I've been through, but we kind of learn that this is what life is supposed to be. That you just struggle. We hear things like life is a hustle. You know, life will beat you down. And these are things that just stay in our minds, right? All I gotta do is do this and die. And I'm here to tell you that the God that created you, the God that created me, created us up for so much more than that. Yes. But just like I can come now and give him this meal, and he can open it and say, not into it, we can be given a gift. We have been given this gift of life, and we ultimately have to decide what we're going to do with it. So this morning so far, and I'm sorry I wasn't here earlier this morning, I happened to homeschool my son in addition to, yeah, he's waving, in addition to running my business. So I have to be really careful with my time, right? So I couldn't be here this morning. But I do know a lot of the speakers, including Ms. Todd, who just left. And this morning and this afternoon, you are going to hear some incredible information. Have you already heard a lot of great information? Yes, you yes, yes, yes. have. But let me tell you what I know about hearing great information. How many of you have ever been to church, or a mosque, or a synagogue, or a great presentation, right? You left there literally floating on cloud nine. Like, oh my goodness, that was so good. And someone sees you, where are you coming from? You look at, let me tell you, that, that, where I just came from, that word was awesome. And then the person says, well, what they talk about? And you're like, well, See, you have to have been there. That's what I'm talking about. You have to have been there. But let me tell you what. The fact that you can't give that person any specifics about what you got, regardless of how emotionally charged you were at that event, means that you don't have any knowledge to implement. Oh my gosh, I thought I could quiet at my phone. I apologize for that. And that would be a child calling. That's my guess, too. Um, can you do the not Because he will come he will come back up here. Okay. So that is part of my life. And I don't apologize for it. So anyway, um what happens with us is that we get good information. Can you please just turn it off? We get good information. And we're excited about it. But the difference between those who see a change in their lives and those who don't yes. is those who take action. Oh. So what I'm going to say, in addition to eating and enjoying whatever you have to drink and all of that, please take notes. Not just of what I share, but of what other, other speakers have shared. And if you did take notes with the earlier speakers, this is a good time to go to your neighbor and say, listen, can I screenshot what you took? Because if you don't have the information, regardless of how good you feel about being here and how good you feel when you walk out, your life will not change because you have no information to implement. So, you guys may have heard this statistic that in eight to 10 years, 96% of all businesses fail. Any business owners in here? Any people planning to be business owners in here? How many of you are excited to hear that in eight to 10 years, only 4% of businesses that started after eight to 10 years is still open, only 4%. That, I mean, if you had a college or a school where only 4% of the students graduated after eight to 10 years, we would be burning it down, wouldn't we? What's the difference? The difference is what I'm about to share with you today, the psychology of success. Success is 80% psychology and 20% strategy. 
strategy or information. It is 80% psychology. That is why people can sit in the same room, work with the same mentor, go to the same coach, have the same books, all of that. And you will find 20% who do something with it, and the other 80% may never get started, or maybe they got started and then life happened. You know how life happens. Yeah. You go out and you find out someone hit your car. They didn't live in notes. And all the good feelings you already had leaving here, just what? And for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, or whatever, you are now preoccupied with this other piece. It's 80% psychology. So today, Rather than spending my time giving you more strategies, because all the other speakers will, I'm going to focus on the 80% psychology part. And I'm here to tell you today that you should really be excited that Alicia brought me in because what I share with you today works in business, it works with your physical body, it works with your relationships, it works in every aspect of your life. What's happening up here psychologically? All right. Is everybody ready to go? Who's ready, ready to go? Oh, come on now. Anybody ready? Ready? Come on. Come on. Tell you this. this is so crucial about learning, and this is what's negatively impacting our kids and what negatively impacted us. The whole idea that you can learn that by just sitting still, quiet hands, quiet feet, for hours is a joke. We learn when we're in a high state of energy. Yes. <clears throat> so if you find yourself falling asleep, I tell my kids this, if you're in class and you find yourself falling asleep, get up and go stand in the back of the class. Do something, change your physiology. Because if you don't get the information, it doesn't matter that you were right. sitting there. Right. So don't sit there and try to be cute and you're nodding off. Like get up and do whatever it is. you need to drink some water, chew some gum, don't smack too loud or whatever. But the point is you've got to be energized. Yes. And as I'm speaking to you right now, if I started speaking like, anybody ever had, had, had a speaker who just spoke in monotone? Yes. No emotion? No, and what happens to you? Yes. It could be great information. I would never do that to you. First of all, because I have too much respect for myself. And secondly, if I'm going to be up there, I might as well have fun. With or without you now, it's more fun with you. Like watching a game. Right. You know any cowboy fans in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always so much more fun when you're watching a game with people who are engaged as well, right? Anyway, so get engaged, get energized, because I'll be, be bringing the fire whether you want to or not. All right, so the first question you have to ask yourself you know, if you're sitting here and you're getting all this information, is what is success to me? So I've started a business, or I'm interested in starting a business, or I've been in business for eight to 10 years. I've survived, barely, because most business owners are barely making it, right? But one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is, what does success mean to me? If my business were to be truly successful, what would that look like for me? And I'm not here to give you the answer, because guess what? It differs from person to person. Yeah. I'm a life coach who's coached clients in 13 different countries, 44 states in the United States of America. But I do not have a brick and mortar shop. I do not have a building with my name on it. Now, there are people for whom that is a definition of success for their business, right? And I'm not saying that I won't eventually have one, but because I also happen to be a mother of five, and part of my definition of success is being home and being able to care for my kids and not just shop, shop them out to people, and I'm not making a judgment on whatever anybody else is doing. I'm saying my definition of success. I made a decision, and it, was a, it, it, it didn't come easy, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about that if we have time. I made a decision to build a business from home. So sometimes I'm coaching a client there in Norway. I don't know what time it is there. It's 2 a.m. here. Praise the Lord, they can't see me. <laughs> I give them the information they need to change their lives. 
And my breath may have been just like crazy, right? But thank God, technology allows me to do those kind of things. And in the morning, I'm there, and I can make breakfast for my children, and I can pray for them, kiss them, drive them to school, whatever I need to do. And when they come home, it's not an empty house most of the time. Every now and then, you know, I gotta do other things as well. So for you, you have to ask yourself, what is success to me? And if you haven't already defined that for yourself, please look, next, look at your neighbor and say, I will not go to bed tonight until I answer this question for myself. I go to bed tonight. Yeah, tell your neighbor. Make a promise. I will not go to bed tonight. Look behind you if no one is next to you. I will not go to bed tonight until I define success for myself. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what are you aiming for if you don't know what you're aiming for? How do you know you think success if you never define it? And that's why many of us stay frustrated. Because today, success for me is making $2,000 a month. Then I see someone who's making $5,000. Now I'm irritated. Then I saw, you see what I'm saying? We stay frustrated and we go up and down and we go in so many different directions. Then we jump on social media and we say, oh, this person is advertising by um, doing videos in front of jet planes they don't own. I need to go and rent a jet plane too. People do these things. You know what you see on social media is mostly not true. All of you smiling like your marriages are wonderful. Oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> that's a whole other topic. But the question is, do you know what success means to you? So there are four different people on that screen. You guys know who they are? Anybody know who they are? Yes. Who's the first one? No, that's not Mary McLeod with him, but... No, not Mary Tubman. <laughs> No, nope, not Barbara Jordan. See, now you guys are making it seem like all black people look alike. What is that? Black? <laughs> is that black? That's Osceola McCarty. Many of us have not heard of her. But she was a woman who washed clothes for a living. Osceola McCarty. She washed clothes for a living. That's all she did. Didn't go to college, wasn't educated, huh? She had money at the end. She saved her money. Yeah, I remember. And when she died, she left over a quarter million dollars for scholarships for students to attend the university in the city where she used to watch clothes. She lived in a little shack. Nothing amazing. Most of us would walk past her and never consider her a success. Now that you've heard her story, is she a success? Yes. She did not have any fancy cars, no diamond rings, she didn't have the latest iPhone, she didn't live in the best neighborhood. Was she a success? Yes. With $250,000, could she have lived a little differently if she wanted to? Yes. She defined success for herself on her terms and she lived that way. And today there are people now getting college degrees for free as a result of wow. her sacrifice. Wow. You guys know the lady in the middle? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. How much, what was her net worth when she passed away? Zero. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, when she passed away, just about every head of state of every country in the world attended her funeral. <clears throat> what do we know her for? Selflessness. Selflessness. She went to places where nobody else wanted to be. She lived amongst the, the cast-offs. The people that we think are less than human. And she gave and gave of herself, and she didn't give it to, return, to get anything else. She could have written books and made millions for herself. She could have had the latest jet planes and whatever, got her butt done, face all smoothed out. She would have done all of that, right? And there's nothing wrong with doing all of that if that's your definition of success. I'm not judging anybody's choices. I'm just saying, these two women define success differently for themselves. But do we all agree they live successful lives? Yes. So when you're working on your business, that is not the time to look over at someone else's page to find out how they're defining success. We can get inspired by people, but ultimately you have to go within and say, if today people were attending my funeral, what do I want them to say about me? What do I want my kids to say? What do I want my neighbors to say? What do I want the person who picks up the garbage on 
my speech to say. You understand? You, yeah. you guys get, and that's the psychology behind it that helps you cut through all the noise in the world yeah. and really live the life you want to live. Mm -hmm. This is why you see really wealthy people who are depressed, and you're like, what the? Mm -hmm. You got. You're taking drugs because. Blockbuster. 
Blockbuster. Girl, didn't we all used to go to Blockbuster? Okay, someone's here. They passed up on Netflix. And they passed up on Netflix. They didn't want to expand. They didn't want to, you know, Because that seems crazy. People are going to be at home watching on their phone. Okay, who else? Hold up. Yes. Sears. Sears. Toys. Toys and Run. Who can do that? A toy store go out of business? What? They didn't want to bring Radio Shack. If it can happen to them, it can happen to if you don't have a growth mindset. So what's the growth mindset? Growth mindset. I can learn anything. I can learn anything I want to. When I'm frustrated, I persevere. Let me tell you guys about frustration. So I had this vision, right? We were going to have the family entertainment center to, to trump all family entertainment centers. Alicia, can you keep me like on time? Like when I have 10 minutes, that kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I did my research. I met with mentors. I visited the top family entertainment centers in Chicago, in Detroit, in you. I mean, I did my work, right? We hired a firm. They came in and they did the market analysis. 20 some thousand for the market analysis. Said we were in a great market. We had a building that we got really dirt cheap, great location, everything looked great. Went to the Small Business Association, they loved the work we had put in, loved the, just the focus. And we picked out carpet swatches. We knew where we were going to, this was this place, right? It was going to have the bowling alley and the climbing wall, <laughs> but it was also going to have an educational component. Where during the school days, um, you know, working hours, Seniors could come and learn healthy cooking habits, and kids could as well. And there were going to be math components, and like there could be field trips that weren't just, oh, we're having fun, but we're learning and having fun. And families could actually order family type meals. So, not just the fast food, like food your grandma would cook that's healthy for you but tastes good. Great vision. Can, can you guys feel this? Like, aren't you excited about it? I'm so excited about it. <laughs> and right, 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 right. right. <laughs> 2008 hit. Our town depended on the automobile industry. Jobs disappeared. CNN, I, I didn't live here at the time, CNN did a report that in the entire United States of America, the town that I lived in had the cheapest housing of the entire United States of America. That's how bad things had fallen. People were, houses were going under all kinds of stuff. SBA looked at us and said, uh, we're not giving you a loan anymore. Which it didn't even make sense to get the loan. There were no people and the resources to come to. I mean, when you're not even paying your rent, how are you going to an yeah, entertainment yeah. center, right? But guess what we had? We had a mortgage on the building. We just spent 100000 on a new roof. It was a 33,000 square foot building. Wow. Oh, wow. 20,000 on marketing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no income coming in from it. You want to talk about the press? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about, are we going to lose our house? Mm -hmm. For seven years. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven very painful years. We paid the mortgage on that property without a dime coming in. Oh, it gets better. The city was struggling so much, they decided that any unoccupied building now had to pay a certain fee each year. Like, I'm not already hurting enough, right? Then people started breaking in to strip the copper wiring. So, Big old glass windows broken out. Like, growth mindset. Yes. We're like, should we just file bankruptcy, just have everything, just, you know. We did persevere. We believed that although we were incredibly frustrated, we got into this, we'll figure a way to get out. But when you're making money just to pay for something that is bringing in no money and you have no idea when it will ever end, because nobody wanted to be paying that for 20 years 
you know, 20 year mortgage or whatever. It's kind of painful. But we persevered. We ended up selling the building and we didn't make back what we paid for the building and the roof. Not the other 20,000 market analysis and all of that. I'm glad I didn't have a heart attack in the process, but anyway. So growth mindset says I'll challenge myself. When I fail, I learn. So one of the big lessons I learned from that is when you're creating a business, always have an exit strategy. <laughs> always have an exit strategy. Ask yourself, as rosy as it looks right now, if something falls through the cracks, if a big old giant sinkhole occurs and everything falls into it, what's my exit strategy? That was one of the lessons we learned from that. If you succeed, I'm inspired. That means when I look around other people, there's lots of people who call themselves life coaches. Some are trained, some aren't. That's not my problem. I'm going to learn from the best, and I'm going to learn from those who aren't so good, like, oh, this is what I will not do. But I do know that there's 7 billion people on the face of the earth. How many clients do I need to feel successful? Right? So I don't have to struggle with anybody. If, there, if that person is a better fit for you as your client, great. Let me learn what you did. And if it fits in with my, idea, my, my own idea of success, then maybe I'll emulate, learn some things. But um, growth set mindset people don't sit around hating on people. And let me tell you something about psychology. Whenever you see people succeeding and you can't be happy for them, you actually program your reticular activating system to ensure that you never achieve that That's level right. of success. <laughs> because your mind doesn't want you to ever hate yourself. Yeah. So if you see something that you really want, but then you hate on the person who has it, your mind says, yeah. I don't want you to ever hate yourself. Yeah. So I'm going to make sure you never get this. Exactly. And your subconscious is actually what works, what, what is working for you most of the time. Like none of you when you're sleeping or even awake is telling your, your heart to beat. That's your subconscious doing it. So your subconscious actually runs your life more so than you do. Have you ever been in a car and you drove from point A to B and you can't really remember the drive? Yes, yes. That is a scary thing. But it happens. Yes, yes. Why? Because you've driven it so much your subconscious has taken over. So stop hating on people. Get a growth mindset because you're blocking your own success. All right. So. Here are some five major things that I want you to write down as we talk about the psychology of success. What you think is what you become. So let me ask you guys, on a daily basis, what is your predominant thought? If your predominant thought is, I don't have, 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 this is not working, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working, guess what you attract? Black, 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 black. Because whatever you're focusing on is what you attract into your mind. It's what you're attracting to your life. So one of the major things that you've got to do if you want to be a success as an entrepreneur or anything is to determine what you're going to think about, what you want to focus on. Anybody here ever been in a romantic relationship? Okay. <laughs> I know you did not put your hand up. <laughs> Okay. So, have you have you ever been in a relationship where all of a sudden you notice something about the person, maybe how they chew, yes. <laughs> and then you start to focus on it. Yes. And every time you go to eat, you're like, you're already anticipating it, and you're already doing your face. Like, and then the next thing is like, well, what happened to him? He was the best thing since sliced bread, or she was the best thing. I just couldn't take it anymore. That person chewed like that when you first met them. <laughs> but before you really started to focus on how they chew, you were focusing on other things. <laughs> and those other things clouded this, this one thing. So in your business, in general, whatever you focus on, if I sit around and think about how hard business is, how I don't have any clients, how you know, there's not, not enough money, so on and so forth. That's what I attract. It pulls me mentally and emotionally down. Have you ever, like, you could just be doing well and you get a text and all of a sudden your energy level just, right? Because your focus shifted to something. 
Now, if you're aware of it, what you do is you immediately, intentionally good. shift your focus yes. back to something positive. Yeah. Yes, it's good. But most of us don't even realize when the shift has happened, right. and then we just stay there. Mm -hmm. We stay there for hours, we stay there for days, we stay there for weeks, we stay there for years mm -hmm. in this negative, horrible thinking. Oh. So, focus on what you're thinking. Pay attention. Don't just go through life. Like, what am I thinking right now? Is this a thought that's propelling me to where I want to be? Or is this a thought that is pushing me backwards? And by the way, that also tells you to be very careful who you let into your space. Because you can be feeling really good and get around some haters, and the next thing you know, you're swimming in that hater race. And you can't get out of it. So one of the things that I do is, like this morning, and my son will attest to this, sometimes people around me don't like it, but that's their problem, not mine. Every morning I meditate. I'm choosing what I'm gonna focus on, and it's positive. Every morning I am listening to people who are where I think I wanna be, and I'm learning what they do. Every morning I'm reading something positive. Because I am intentionally choosing what it is I'm going to focus on. It's like a garden. You know you can clear your garden and do nothing else and stuff will grow in it. What will grow in it? Weeds. They need no invitation. It's freezing outside, they're growing. Right? You have to be very intentional about on weeding it and then figuring out what kind of barriers am I going to create to protect my mind so that I don't introduce it to myself what I don't want. <coughs> what matters most is how you see yourself. See that cat looking in the mirror? Can't tell that cat nothing. Nothing. Because this cat will come out and make so much noise that you would believe it is a liar because it believes that. What do you believe about yourself? What do you think about yeah. yourself? And some of us grew up in such negative environments that all we think about are our shortcomings. I'm not tall enough. I'm too fat. I'm too short. I'm too black. I'm too white. I'm too this. I'm too that. I'm not educated enough. I'm too educated. Whatever environment you've grown up in really does affect how you see yourself. And how you see yourself then determines how you show up in the world. So this cat is convinced I am a lion. And let me tell you, because this cat is going to come out and act like a lion, after a while you won't even notice it's a cat anymore. You will respect it for the lion that it believes it is. How do you see yourself and how are you showing up in the world? And that's the psychology that will determine whether you show up as a business owner and you own it or whether you show up as, well, I'm a small business owner. Well, you know, I'm just starting out. Well, you know, I don't have the resources and we make all these excuses. Maya Angelou says, if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. Other thing that you want to think about is how you set intention. Every morning I wake up and I set an intention. And my intentions are always geared towards helping me achieve that definition of success that I've written. My intentions, I tell you, always take me out of my comfort zone. So I'm actually naturally an introvert. But my intention today when I came out was, you know what? You're going to love me. You're going to love what I have to share. I'm going to be so high energy, even if you don't like me, you're still going to love what I have to say. Because you know it's going to make a difference in your life. And I have to psych myself up for that, right? But I set those intentions. Your intentions are the seeds that create your future. So what kind of intentions do you set? Something else that you want to be doing if you want to change your psychology is you want to take care of your body. No lie, this is a true story. I'm at a church. This church is really into missions. And this lady says, I want to go to Africa to do this mission trip. People always want to go to Africa. Let me tell you, there is a mission field downtown Kuwait. There's a mission field in your community, but you know what? We want to go to Africa. No, no problem with that. I am originally from Africa. So anyway, she wants to go to Africa. This lady is morbidly obese. She wants to go to Africa. Great intention, right? What are you going to do to get your body into the kind of shape that will allow you to go and serve in Africa? Because if you're going to serve, if you're going on a mission trip, you're going to serve, right? You're not going for people to wake hand and foot on you, to find a wheelchair for you, to get your oxygen mask, 
X, Y, and Z. But she had the intention she was going to go serve in Africa. So she went, paid her money, got on the plane. First stop, the heat was too much for her. She passed out. It became a medical emergency where the whole team had to figure out how to get her back to, to America as opposed to what they went there to do. So you can set the best goals for your business, but if you're not taking care of your body, on paper it looks great, but you can't execute. You wake up in the morning, you have no energy. By midday, you need a three hour night. I'm not saying this to judge anybody. I'm just saying whatever the definition of success is, take care of your mind, but you've got to take care of your body. 20 minutes a day exercising, and everybody can find 20 minutes. Right. It may have meant that you parked way out and walked, and you took the stairs instead of the elevator. But if you're not taking care of your body, you're already off track in terms of what you want to do with your business. And we see successful people every day who are dying like flies. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Not because of a particular health issue that they have no control over, but a lot of times because of health issues that we bring on upon ourselves right. because of our lifestyle. You need to find a role model. This whole idea of I'm gonna do it alone, those who want to change their minds, who understand the psychology of success, understand that they need role models. Some of these role models may be people you meet face to face. Some of them may be people that you just listen to. I have role models who are dead. <laughs> but I read what they put out. I watch what they put out. I learn. I study. I read a lot of biographies. So who are your role models? If you don't have any, determine by the end of this week, one or two role models. You can't do this alone. Your positive action combined with positive thinking results in success. The point here is, if you have a great mindset, if you have um, your body together, if you define success for yourself, if you're thinking positively, but then that's all you do, you're still not going to see success in your business. Why? You've taken no action. Tony Robbins talked about not just taking action, but taking massive action. So what is the one thing you are going to do today as a result of being in this room? Are you going to text somebody? Are you going to redo your, your business cards? Are you going to set up a website? What is the one thing you're going to do? If you are not taking massive action in the direction of your goals, that intention that you set, that success idea that you have, guess what happens? Nothing. We must have courage to bet on ideas, to take the calculated risk, and to act. You've got to take the risk. There's nothing easy in any of this. Yeah. Now, it would have been wonderful if this money that I had invested in that family education center could all worked out. But guess what? The lessons I learned from it are invaluable. Yes. And just watch, because I'm not done yet. <laughs> all right. Because Colleen needs one. Can, well, yeah. <laughs> Not sure that's the route I'm going to go right now, but we'll see. Now, this part is not something that we hear a lot in business um, settings as I wrap up really quickly here. I want to talk about spirituality. I don't care what you call God. God is God, creator of the universe. For people to say, I want to succeed in business and life, but I don't believe in anything, What, what, thank you. How do you believe in yourself? Where do you come from? Where do your ideas come from? So I want to challenge each and every person here. Wherever you may be spiritually, you need a spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. You need to have something that you hold on to, something that you draw upon. When your well is empty, a place that you go and you pull from that. For me, nature does it for me every time. <laughs> I go out, I see that full moon, I'm hiking, I see those birds, I see the plants, and I'm just like, the same intelligence that created all of this created me, and that power lives in me. Therefore, whatever I'm facing, there is enough intelligence for me to get away, to get out of it, to figure it out. So what is your spiritual base? Those who want to be successful understand this. The higher your energy level, the more efficient your body. The more efficient your body, the better you feel. And the more you will use your talent to produce outstanding results. I've already spoken to you guys about energy. 
Those of you who come into a room and suck the energy out, please leave. Yeah, please leave. And who wants to be around them? And that means clients don't want to be around you either. When someone asks you how you're doing, that client at that time is not trying to hear all your issues. There's a time and place. Maybe your shower. Okay? You try and get it out. But you really need to understand where your energy level is because it, um, it affects other people. So for those of you taking notes really quickly, meditation and prayer, really quickly, these are some daily success practices. Setting intentions, prioritizing your tasks. Some of you will have 10 things that you know to do, but you know one is more important than the other nine. What do you do? You do all the other nine. You go sweep your floor, you check your email, you do, you do everything but the most important thing. Stop it. Yeah. That is a mindset thing. Yeah. That is you running away from the real things you should be doing. Exercising, eating to live. That's the other thing. You yeah. filling yourself with junk and caffeine all day. How, how are you supposed to run? How many of you will put sugar water in your cars? You give it the gas it needs. How about you respect your body in the same way yeah. if you expect that body and that mind yeah. to operate optimally for you, right? Yeah. And then gratitude journaling. Let me tell you about gratitude journaling. When life gets tough, if you don't know what you're grateful for, it will take you under. So waking up and saying, the account said minus 2,000. But I'm still breathing. I'm still breathing. That's good. So I'm going to focus on the yeah, positive. That's right. That's right. Yes. It means a chance to get you down. Yeah, get, yes. <laughs> Who can I beg to? No, I'm just kidding. But I, I, I write in my journal every single night. Yes, sir. I'm going to use my half for off when you get through. You got, oh, I appreciate that so much. Because, you know, I told you I have five children. So <laughs> anything you can do would be appreciated. All right. It's not about having time, it's about making time. Because some of you have heard everything that you've heard today from all the speakers in your life, but you don't understand. I don't have the time yet. And next year, you'll be right where you are or worse. You can't have a million dollar dream on a minimum wage, a minimum wage work ethic. How much are you really working your business? I'm a business owner, I work one hour a week because I'm in charge of my business. When you work for yourself, that's when you work the hardest. If you really have the right mindset. So, I do have a sheet up there for those of you who may want these slides. No big mm -hmm. deal to me. You write your email, I'll, I'll email you these slides. This is a video I was going to have you watch. Can they watch it? Three minutes. You can say, hey, they are under, so go ahead. All right. Okay. Let's see. Oh, wait a second. The arrow. The arrow isn't showing up here, according to Ron. So how many of you have watched the movie Shawshank Redemption? Yes. Listen, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've watched that movie, and I don't watch a lot of movies, but there are some things that do really get my juices flowing, and I love Shawshank Redemption. Well, it was embedded. Will it let you show it? No? Oh, well, you're going to have to go find that on, on um, YouTube yourself. You may have but to basically... Take it out of the PowerPoint. You may have to take it out of but basically in this um, scene, right, this young man, um, <coughs> Robbins, no, not Morgan, he was Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins was falsely accused of a crime, imprisoned, repeatedly raped in, crime, in, 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 in um, jail. All kinds of crazy things happened to him. But he, had, he, he just kept hope alive, really, truly kept hope alive that he was going to get out of there one way, shape, or the other. Morgan Freeman's character was called Red, and Red is a lifer. That means there's no parole, you know, it's just like, this is where I am. And he's figured out how to survive in jail. So they're having this conversation, and Robin's character is dreaming about being free and living in Mexico. And Red is basically saying, I can't even imagine that. I know how to survive in here. I don't know how to survive out there, so I'm not even going to bother thinking about it. Wow. And some of you might be there. Wow. You know how to be an employee. You think you want to be a business owner, but you're not really sure how to do it. And so we find ourselves, how many of us have gone back and forth? We go back to that safety net, right? And there's nothing wrong with having a safety net, as long as you don't ever quit on your dream. <laughs> so anyway, Red gives Tim Robbins um, character all the reasons why it was stupid, it was foolish 
to think about living outside of jail. And you know what Tim Robbins' character says? He says, listen, I would rather get busy living than get busy dying. Mm -hmm. But each of us gets to make that choice. And that's what you get to choose minute by minute in your business. Are you going to get busy living and creating your dreams <coughs> or get busy dying and complaining about all that wouldn't work for you? Good. So at this point, if you all will stand with me, we're going to say some business affirmations really quickly. I have a ton of them, but we're probably only going to do this page. We'll see what your energy looks like. Because you have another speaker, so i got to be respectful. So if you will stand so you got energy to do this, and we're just going to speak this like we believe it, if you can stand. I know everybody can't stand, but if you can stand. But even, even if you're not standing, I want you to stand on the inside of you and really feel this and own this, right? So, let's do this together. My business is a huge success. My business is a huge success. Just read all of them together. Okay, ready? I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I